Hi, welcome to a course on integrated pest management. So, now you have understood about the integrated management strategies to be employed in the various field crop pests and as well as the commercial crops. Now, we will understand the various pests which occurring on the vegetables and the fruit crops and the integrated pest management of these pests. So, in this class let us look at the integrated pest management in tomato. Tomato as you know is an one of the important vegetable crops grown across the country and it is grown in an area of about 846,000 hectares and with a production of about 138 metric tons with an productivity of about 21 tons per hectare. Now, the pest which occurs on the tomato can be broadly categorized as the pest which occurs of a national importance and those pests which, which are of a regional significance. The list in this table will indicate the number of pests which are of the national significance. So, important one are the fruit borers that is Helicorpa armigera, white fly, serpentine leaf miner, tobacco caterpillar, thrips and mite pests like red spider mite and of late we have one invasive pest that is pinworm. Similarly, we also have a list of some of the insects which are occurring in a particular region of the state or of the country such as some species of leaf hoppers, the cutworm and two or three species of aphids as well as the mealybug. Now, let us understand the significance of these pests, their life cycle, the nature of damage and the symptoms that they produce and some of the conditions which favors these first and after that the integrated approach that we need to employ in order to combat these pests. So, first of all let us take the fruit borer it is a Helicorpa armigera and we all know that is, is one of the a very serious and the regular pest and its distribution if you look at it. So, it is distributed in almost all the countries of the African continent in Australia and as well as the Asian continent. And this is a medium sized stout moth which usually lays 1500 to 2000 eggs singly on the leaf or on the flower part and the larvae upon hatching for the first two instars it usually scrapes the leaves and later from third instar onwards it shifts to the fruits and then feeds the internal content of the fruit. And a very characteristic feature that we can notice is that the head and the thoracic part of this larvae will be inside the fruit and whereas the remaining part will be outside. And because of the feeding the internal content the fruit generally will have an a characteristic hole and externally which can be seen and this also leads to the secondary infection such as rotting and the dropping of the fruit and all these fruits generally will lose the market value. And general life cycle will be completed in about a month. Generally the warm weather followed by the light rain or the dry spell will favor this pest. The next important pest is the white fly which is Bemisia tabaki. This is also a cosmopolitan which is widely distributed and also a polyphagous pest which attacks a wide variety of fruits and as well as the vegetable. So, here both the nymphs and as well as the adults are the damaging stage and in fact these tiny white flies will lay the eggs singly by inserting the eggs into the plant tissue and the first instar nymphs which are referred as crawlers which are active. So, they move around the plant and find a suitable place and once they find a suitable place especially on the under surface of the leaf. So, they will stick to there and with the help of their needle like mouth part they will start sucking the plant sap and they become sedentary until they complete their nymphal stage and they also enter into a pupa like stage we call it as a puparium and the adults will emerge out. And the nymphs when they start feeding on the leaves by sucking the sap such leaves will start developing the yellowing symptoms which is nothing but a chloratic patches that we get and also the curling symptom and the plant will loses the vigor 
and thus there will be a stunted growth of the plant. And the adults they also cause the damage by sucking the sap and more importantly they are majorly the vectors of the viral disease. So, this is the indirect damage that they are going to cause and a single viruliferous adult is capable of transmitting this viral disease for the several plants. So, the stunted growth and the loss of vigor will ultimately leads to the poor yield in the tomato. The serpentine leaf miner which is a dipteran pest Liriomyza trifoli is in fact an introduced pest. So, it is mainly introduced to the Indian subcontinent during 1990-91 from USA through the imported chrysanthemum cuttings. And this is also a polyphagus and it is known to attack the many ornamental and the vegetable of about 25 families. The adult is a small fly which normally insert the egg in the leaf tissues and the maggots or the young ones upon hatching will start mining on the leaves and these mines are also very characteristic as you can see here. So, the width of these mines will goes on increasing as the maggot will grow and by remaining inside the mine. So, it feeds on the internal content. At the end of the maggot period you get a wider mining and which is a characteristic feature of the serpent that is why it is referred as a serpent and leaf miner. And several of these mines will sometimes by the different individuals will leads to a white patchy appearance on the leaves and such leaves will lose the chlorophyll content and the growth of the plant is also going to be reduced and the affected leaves will dry up and there will be a premature fall of the leaf. Then the tobacco caterpillar, so this is Spodoptera litura which is also a widely distributed across the tropical and subtropical parts of the world and as well as across India. And this is also a polyphagus and besides tomato it also feeds on the castor, cotton, groundnut, cabbage and other cruciferous crop. And the moth is a medium sized stout and generally the female lays the eggs in groups a batch of about 50 to 80 and this batch of eggs are covered with the white scales or the hairs and upon hatching the larvae will be gregarious in nature and they congregate there itself and for first two instars they will scrape the leaves and by scraping the leaves the leaves will turn into white papery appearance and in the later instar onwards then the larvae become nocturnal and during daytime these larvae will be hiding in the soil or in the debris and in the night time so they come out and then defoliate the leaves and they also attack the fruits which is quite significant and make a large irregular holes on the fruits and uh, which will actually leads to the secondary infection and as well as the dropping of the fruit is quite common. Then there are two species of thrips which occurs one is the thrips tabaki and the franklinella shulji and both these are also cosmopolitan that is widespread and they are polyphagous in nature attacking many crops. And in fact both the nymph and as well as the adults are the damaging stage and these adults they insert the eggs into the plant tissue and the nymphs so upon hatching so they remain on the under surface of the leaf and then they start scraping the leaf and rupturing the plant cell and sucking the plant sap which oozes out from that. As a result of this scraping initially the leaves will start getting the white specks and these white specks or these things they will coalesce and form into a white silvery patches and later they turn into bronze or the brownish and then so they dries up and drops down. And more important and this will also attack the fruits either younger stage or at the ripening stage by rupturing or rasping the skin of the fruit and as a result the affected skin or the part of the fruit will develop a rough or the corky appearance and which during the growth sometimes will crack up and leading to the secondary infection and dropping up of the fruits. Then the red spider mite that is Tetranicus species is also quite important. So, both the nymphs and as well as the adults are the damaging stage and it is referred as a spider mite because 
they have a very characteristic feature of making a spider like webbing at the under surface of the leaves. So, the adults will remain in the under surface of the leaf and then web it and then lay the eggs and both the nymphs and the adults with the help of their chelicerate mouth parts usually rupture the plant cell and they will suck the plant sap which is oozing from this. Initially those ruptured plant cells will develop into a white specks and these specks will start congregating and then so they form into a white patches and from the upper surface of the leaf you get the discoloration and this is a kind of discoloration we normally notice on the leaves and they have a very high multiplication rate and they multiply in thousands and after multiplying usually they go to the tip of the leaf and then form a kind of a balloon through their webbings and that is how the adults and the nymphs are going to so transfer or they will shift or disperse from one plant to the other plant. Then pinworm which is of latest the pest we can say or the invasive pest Tuta absoluta. So, in fact, this was first discovered or observed in the Maharashtra during 2014 and since then it has now spread to the Karnataka also and this is a pest of great economic importance we can say because so globally this is also considered as one of the serious pest and now it has entered India. So, one has to be quite careful and closely monitor the spreading of this pest and a suitable management to be taken immediately. And this not only attacks the tomato, but also attacks the other solanaceous crops like brinjal and as well as potato. It is a micro lepidopteran, the moth is quite small which has a fringed wings and generally lay the eggs singly all along the midrib of the leaf and the larva which is greenish in color usually have a black head and it mines into the leaf immediately after hatching and the mines are quite broad we call it as a patches like. So, unlike the serpentine leaf miner which is quite narrow and as a result of this mining what happens we get a white patches on the leaves and which will later become necrotic or the tissues will die become brownish and the leaves will dry and then drop down. And this also is known to attack the stems, so as an internal stem borer and then affects the growing shoot. But most important is the larvae attacks the developing fruits by making a very fine pin holes at the base of the fruit or near the petiole, so that you can actually see it on these fruits and uh, they enter and then feed the internal content, so which ultimately leads to the secondary infection and the dropping up of the fruits. Now, the economic threshold levels of these pests, especially the fruit borer is uh, given as one larva per meter row length or 2 percent of the fruit damage and for leaf miner 2 to 5 mines per plant. So, monitoring of these pests and the management is quite essential and some of the important the management strategies as an IPM strategies we can look at it. So, going for any kind of a crop the first we should look at tolerant or the resistant varieties against some of the pest, so is quite essential. So, in tomato we do have some of the resistant or the tolerant varieties against the leaf curl virus that is mainly against the white fly and wherever the regions where this disease or this pest is quite severe, so one should look at so growing these tolerant or the resistant varieties. Then the pre sowing operation is uh, quite important, some of the operations such as the deep summer plowing, so which is essential especially in exposing the pupae of uh, these pests and uh, killing them and soil solarization is an another important uh, the pre sowing operation especially for the nursery bed by covering the nursery bed with a polythene sheet of 45 gauge thickness at least 3 weeks before sowing will again get rid of these pests including some of the diseases and nematodes and application of neem cake at the rate of 250 kg per hectare at the time of land preparation will take care of the thrips and the nematodes. Then during the nursery development we have to grow or raise the marigold especially the tall African variety, so which bears the yellow and the orange flowers at least 15 to 20 days before raising of the tomato nursery as these marigold plants will act as a trap crop for the helicorpa pest. And the nursery bed should be covered with the nylon net of a 40 gauge mesh 
in order to protect the seedlings against the white fly infestation thereby so we are going to uh, prevent the leaf curl disease also then in the management in the main field some of the cultural methods such as at the time of transplanting so we have to transplant the 20 to 25 days old tomato and the 45 to 50 days old marigold simultaneously in the ratio of 16 is to 1 in the sense 16 rows of tomato plant followed by one row of marigold plant has to be planted and so the flowering of these crop will occur simultaneously and the helicorpa usually prefers the marigold plant for egg laying so in such cases so lot of egg load we can see it on the marigold plant and such flowers can be actually harvested and marketed or can be sprayed separately and we can actually effectively control the helicorpa or the egg stage itself the mechanical methods includes greatly the collection and the destruction of the egg masses especially in case spodoptera where we can easily locate these egg masses and as well as the congregated larvae and such larvae or these leaves can be collected and destroyed and similarly for helicorpa the grown up older larvae so or in the early stages of the plant can be so located and collected and destroyed some of the physical methods includes the installation of the sticky or the color traps the light traps and as well as the pheromone traps so yellow or blue water pan traps or the sticky trap will take care of some of the insects such as leaf miners thrips and aphids and light trap at the rate of 1 per acre which can be operated between 6 pm and 10 pm will take care of the helicorpa and pinworm and the pheromone trap especially for monitoring purpose for helicorpa can be installed at the rate of 4 to 5 per acre or for the pinworm so we can use 10 to 12 traps per acre for mass trapping and which is found to be quite effective and we do have some of the very good biocontrol agent especially the egg parasitoids if you look at the trichogramma chelonis brasiliensis and pretiosum which are employed at the rate of 2.5 lakhs per hectare which are made to release at uh, in the batches of 5 at the rate of 50,000 per hectare per release starting from the flower initiation will take care of all these the defoliators and as well as the pinworms and we also have the microbial pesticide like in the form of NPV for helicorpa and as well as for the SLNPV at the rate of 250 LE per hectare. So one should add 1 percent jaggery as a sunscreen and this should be applied at 28, 35 and 42 days after planting especially during evening hours. Then botanicals also we can recommend spraying the NSKE 5 percent or the Ajar Directin 5 percent which is commercially available neem can be applied in order to get rid of helicorpa and the other mites and based on the economic threshold level so one can go for the chemicals so such as the imidacloprid or thiomethoxam against the sucking pest and the phenazaquin or spiromesifin or dicofol against the mites and some of the the IGR such as nuvoluron okay or the pyrethroids and other chemicals especially for helicorpus podoptera and pinworm Thank you.